Everyone's been asking, what is China's new edge at sea? According to a recent analysis, China's new aircraft carriers have one big advantage over the U.S. Navy. But here's the twist. That advantage isn't about the ship size, catapults, or crew. It's about something far more strategic, a shield made of missiles, satellites, and radars that guard these carriers long before the battle begins. Today, we reveal how this system quietly reshapes naval strategy across the Pacific. China's new aircraft carriers have one big advantage over the U.S. Navy. While the U.S. still holds the title for carrier experience, China has built something the Americans simply can't match near Asia, a massive missile ecosystem. For two decades, the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, PLARF, has poured resources into creating the world's most concentrated missile arsenal. From mobile trucks hidden in forests to hardened silos along the coast, these launchers form the foundation of China's true naval edge, salvo mass. That means overwhelming volume, fired all at once. Here's what that looks like in practice. DF-21D Carrier Killer, capable of striking moving ships more than 1,500 kilometers away. DF-26, nicknamed the Guam Express, reaching 4,000 kilometers into the Pacific. DF-17, equipped with a hypersonic glide vehicle that zigzags through the atmosphere, nearly impossible to intercept. Plus cruise missiles like the YJ-18 and YJ-12, launched from ships, subs, and aircraft, each adding another wave to the storm. When you add up the numbers, the logic becomes clear. A U.S. carrier strike group might field a few hundred defensive interceptors. China can launch hundreds more simultaneously from land, sea, and air at a fraction of the cost. Every U.S. missile fired is one fewer in its limited magazine. Every Chinese launcher can reload on home soil. That's the math behind the phrase salvo advantage. It's not about who fires the most accurate shot. It's about who runs out of missiles first. What's often overlooked is how this network works with China's geography. The first island chain wraps around the mainland like a natural fortress, allowing missile forces to cover a huge arc of ocean without leaving home territory. That geographical advantage multiplies firepower and reduces risk turning China's coastal defense belt into a launch zone that projects control far beyond its shoreline. Of course, missiles alone don't decide the outcome. You need eyes, a system that sees, tracks, and directs them in real time. That's where China's kill chain comes in, an integrated web of sensors, satellites, and uncrewed systems designed to connect every shooter with every target. From orbit, Chinese satellites constantly scan the Pacific, capturing radar and optical imagery that spot surface ships even through cloud cover. On the ground, massive over-the-horizon radars bounce signals off the ionosphere to detect movements thousands of kilometers away. In the air, reconnaissance drones and maritime patrol aircraft confirm targets and transmit coordinates within minutes. All this information flows into data fusion centers that generate a single digital map of the ocean. When a launch command is issued, missiles fire in synchronized waves, ballistic shots diving from above, cruise missiles skimming below, and decoys scrambling defenses. The result is a complex, multi-layered attack sequence that stretches any defensive network to its limit. This system gives China's carriers, especially the Fujian, freedom to operate within a high awareness zone. They don't need to rely solely on their own radars or scouts. They're part of a nationwide surveillance architecture that feeds them a constant stream of precise target updates. U.S. carrier groups, on the other hand, must move through regions already mapped by Chinese sensors, constantly countering detection with electronic camouflage and long-range maneuvers. It's a digital game of cat and mouse, and within the first island chain, China has the home field advantage. What's new is the speed of this information loop. Thanks to artificial intelligence aiding signal processing and satellite constellations that update within minutes, China's kill chain is moving closer to real-time strike coordination. That means the Fujian can act or defend based on live data from dozens of sources, turning the Pacific into a digitally monitored battle space where surprise is hard to achieve. This integration is why analysts call China's system a network shield, not just a missile arsenal. It doesn't depend on one weapon or one ship. 
it depends on connectivity, speed, and information dominance. And that combination is what allows China's new carriers to sail confidently within their protective zone, not as isolated flagships, but as key nodes in a high-tech defense network built to control the tempo of the sea. Now let's zoom in on the star of the show, the Fujin, China's first supercarrier equipped with electromagnetic catapults, similar to America's USS Gerald R. Ford. It can launch heavier fighters, advanced drones, and electronic warfare aircraft that carry more fuel and weapons than ever before. But what makes the Fujin truly formidable isn't the hardware, it's the environment it operates in. Within that missile bubble, the Fujin becomes something else entirely. A floating fortress that can strike, recover, and reload while protected by layers of coastal firepower. Imagine this scenario. As the Fujin's J-15T fighters take off, radar stations onshore extend their eyes, early warning aircraft circle above, and the rocket force stands ready to erase any approaching fleet. Every sortie the Fujin launches is backed by hundreds of land-based missiles that keep enemy ships far away. It's a self-reinforcing cycle. The carriers protect the coastline, and the coastline protects the carriers. This is what strategists call interior line warfare. China's ships operate close to home, resupplying faster, cycling aircraft more often, and coordinating seamlessly with land-based air power. The U.S., by contrast, must fight from the outside, with longer supply lines and limited interceptor stockpiles. Even with advanced Aegis destroyers, F-35C sensors, and SM-6 missiles, an American carrier group could face dozens of simultaneous missile waves. After the first few exchanges, the numbers alone start working against them. Every defensive shot costs time and fuel. Every offensive one comes cheaper for China. So while the USS Gerald R. Ford may look technologically superior, the Fujin doesn't need to be. Its real edge is operating under the world's most formidable missile shield, a shield that gives it time, protection, and the ability to control tempo. And in modern warfare, tempo is everything. In the end, the Fujin isn't redefining naval warfare by size or speed, it's redefining it by strategy. It fights as part of a system built on missiles, sensors, and timing. The result is a carrier force that can survive the first strike, adapt faster, and dominate within its shielded zone. For the United States, the response is already underway. Longer-range aircraft, distributed fleets, and undersea operations to challenge China's home advantage. But the new era of sea power is clear. The biggest ship doesn't automatically win anymore. The winner is the one who controls the space above the ocean. And right now, that space belongs to China's missile shield, the invisible force giving its new carriers their one big advantage. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.